Efficacy by Boyd Blog. First, <sighs> first published, <laughs> first, first published on Twilight. To <laughs> damn it, first published on Twilight.net. Now on the internet for all to see. Part one, Bella. I tentatively touched the bandage on my arm. Carlyle's words sunk in. Edward thought changing me would take away my soul? By asking him to change me, I was basically saying that I would give up my soul to be his. I would leave this human life. I would leave my parents. I would give myself completely to Edward for eternity. No matter how hard I tried to comprehend it all, it, it was impossible. I loved him. I wanted to be with him. No, I couldn't expect him to. I knew I would always be the fragile human that disrupted his life. I recognized our relationship was completely destructive. I, I would move forward. I would change. He wouldn't. He'd never agree to change me. I'd get older. He'd stay the same. I loved him. But he could never truly be mine. My heart pounded in reaction to him. No words could describe how completely mesmerizing he was. His beauty, his honey-gold eyes, dark, curling lashes, pouty, full lips, and distinct, masculine jaw. He was desirable to me in every way. Not just his looks, but also the way he would hold me, the gentle way he kissed me, and the sparkle I could see in his eyes when I said something amusing. Would he still love me if he were able to read my thoughts? Thinking about it made my head hurt. I suspected Edward was going to leave me. I felt it. I knew it. I remember the words he said to me when he was in the hospital in Phoenix after James. Bella, you have to go to Jacksonville, so I can't hurt you anymore. <laughs> my, my heart was breaking already, and the only solution I could come up with... That would leave me some slither of self <laughs> some slither of self respect, and the tiniest possibility of a favorable outcome was if I beat him to it. I'd only suffered a minute of that excruciating, burning hell. I knew if it meant I'd be with Edward forever, I'd suffer it. He wouldn't be able to let me go completely, and that would give me the time I needed to come up with a plan to convince him we were meant to be together. Together. Forever. I definitely couldn't leave it up to Edward and his outdated moral ethics. I needed, to, I needed to be prepared, because my heart could be ripped from my chest at any moment, and yet I needed to be convincing enough for him to accept my decision, for the scene to play out how I wanted it to. Bella, we're leaving. He said with no emotion... <laughs> All my fears in that instant were actualized. <laughs> he was going to walk away from our love. He was going to walk away from me, his mate, to protect me. Bella, please. I could sense his unease. I wasn't going to let him say the words he wanted to say to me. No, I need to say this. If I don't say it now, then I know I'll regret it. Please, Edward. You're not ready to truly be with me. You don't want me to be like you. I couldn't look into his ochre eyes then. I dipped my hand down and looked at his beautiful hand in mine. I want everything with you, Edward. I want a life. I want to be yours. I want you intimately. I know you don't want that with me, even though I know I'm your mate. I know I am. I pulled his hand up to my lips. I, I breathed in the unique smell of his cool marble skin, and I made myself believe that this wouldn't be the last time we touched. I'm moving to Florida in two weeks, I said in a rush before I mentally talked myself out of it. I tried to stop crying, but I couldn't. I'd fall asleep, I'd wake, the day would repeat. Before I knew it, I graduated high school. <laughs> Months dragged on. College was routine, a mild respite from the pain. 
new friends that I would never let get too close. Male attention that was unwelcome and not reciprocated. I had my own... <laughs> I had my own room in the dorm. I w it was on the third floor and I'd always leave the window unlocked. Some nights I'd lie in bed and think of his hands, his eyes, his mouth. I'd picture him smiling at me, his nostrils flaring as his light touch traced my cheek. I'd slowly bring my body to orgasm, whispering his name. I'd leave my... <laughs> I'd leave my damn panties on the floor, memorizing their location, the way they were folded. All through my classes, I'd pray I'd get back to my room to find them moved even a fraction. They were never touched. How long could I sustain this life? The hole was wide. <laughs> the feeling of loss was excruciating. I promised him I'd wait forever, but the thought of him never coming to me sunk my mood into a deep depression. My hair was down in soft waves. I even put on a little makeup. In my... In my mind, I believed that this was the night he would come to me. Just the power of that fantasy made me jubilant. I imagined him seeing me, coveting me. I imagined he would be waiting for me in my dorm. I imagined him telling me that he couldn't stand being apart from me any longer, and he wanted to make love to me. Then my fantasy faded. He would never want that. <laughs> I sat unmoving, sipping a soda. When a tall, attractive man approached my table, he seemed nice. He was about to graduate as well. He was friendly and he was funny. The fear was there, but I also felt so stupid. Charlie had told me to never accept a drink from a stranger. How could I have been so trusting? Why did I tell him where I lived? When I did wake, I was on my bed in my dorm room. The sun was bright and the window was open. I touched my chest. I was still clothed, my jeans still on. My shoes weren't. I didn't feel different, physically. I hadn't been... violated. I cried out for Edward again and again until I lost all hope. The numbness came back. I graduated college. <laughs> I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do with my life. All, <laughs> all I knew was that I had to work to pay off my student debt, and I wanted to be somewhere Edward could be near me. I wanted to make it easy for him to decide to come to me. I rented a small house out of the city. I'd become an unhappy recluse. I was dead inside. My mind had shut down to self-protect. I couldn't conjure the sound of his voice or imagine his delectable and distinct smell. <laughs> the knife blade was sharp, and yet it didn't scare me. I looked at it with a casual detachment. If my life was going to end without him, I wanted some dignity. I knew my heart was black, wasted away without the love I'd tasted when I was with him. Part 2. Edward. Bella broke up with me in the forest. Before I could speak, before I could comprehend on my words that it would hurt her, and before I could fully accept that I was never going to see her again. I didn't even get the chance to try and make her believe that I wanted a life away from her. A blasphemous lie. If you love me, then please don't try to contact me until you're ready if I love her. She, she didn't understand that to love her, I had to set her free. Bella was shrouded in sadness without me. I could see it. Other people saw it. I wanted desperately to be closer, but not close enough to put her in danger. <laughs> she stayed away from people. She made excuses when they tried to involve her in fun activities. Her stubbornness was infuriating. It was like she was punishing herself. At night, I clambered to the roof of her dorm. 
I couldn't risk being in her room when she was sleeping. The temptation to hold her was too immense. Instead, I listened to her heart beating and her soft breathing. I, I blocked out the thoughts and voices of her fellow students, their inane chatter about kegs and boys and fish. <laughs> <laughs> Their inane chatter about kegs and boys and fashion just proved me how different Bella really was. Most nights, Bella would whisper my name, her heart rate would steadily pick up, and then thunder an exquisite beat as she found physical and mental release. For her to imagine me as she found sublime pleasure devastated me. Then she would cry. She would sob, and it was like I could smell her. <laughs> it's like I could smell her guilt mixed with the unique smell of her blood, her tears, and the most exquisite scent of her lingering arousal. The m- <laughs> she would cry for me and beg me to come back to her. <sighs> Bella's sexual desires seemed to be solely focused on me. I was aware girls Bella's age enjoyed sex, boys even more so. What it would be like for Bella to feel a human male give her pleasure. I tried to imagine what Bella was feeling as she made herself climax. Is that weird? (laughs) The knowledge didn't give me solace. Instead, it made me wish I could give her the wave of ecstasy and intimacy. Now I understood that euphoric bliss, even for only a few short seconds of orgasm, even for only a few short seconds of orgasm, could make her feel something otherworldly. My mind may have been 111, but my body was still 17. I, (laughs) I felt complete shame and mortification when I allowed... Myself to imagine being intimate with Bella, touching, tasting, feeling or surround all of me. I denied myself release. My inadequacies made me rage with self-hatred. For real. Hi. If you've made it this far, congratulations. Uh, Let me skip to the gist for you. Uh, The guy who raped her got killed by Edward, uh, moving at what is phrased as preternatural speed. He watches her sleep a lot, uh, says that he loves her, and then stops her from killing herself. So, there you have it. And if you were worried about any juicy bits, uh, there's one tasteful sex scene at the end that doesn't really tell you anything that dirty. So, have a nice day. Oh, and if you feel like it, uh, please subscribe for more real stories, maybe sometime soon.